You are looking live into the belly of the beast at Full Moon Coliseum in Los Angeles, California. Home to one of the SFL's newest franchises of today and battleground for the league stars of tomorrow as we present the SFL minor league championship game between the Salt Lake City Rustlers and the San Jose Flight. Good Sunday evening. Hope you had a good weekend and a joyous Father's Day. My name is Josh Circle, bringing you the play-by-play -play this evening. And joining me in the booth, Vancouver Legion tight end James Walters. James, a championship for a player at any stage of their career is a special thing. What do you expect to see out here tonight? Thanks, Josh. This game is really going to come down to defense. Salt Lake City came into the playoffs with the number one scoring defense, while the flight came into the playoffs tied to the number two scoring defense. Keys to the game for the Rustlers. Can quarterback Tommy Utah put this team on his back, get the ball downfield to Kelsey Brown, and lead the third-ranked passing offense past the eighth-ranked flight passing defense? On defense, they need to shut down halfback Jimmy Hazard and make the flight offense one-dimensional. For San Jose, it's to get Jimmy Hazard 20-25 touches and utilize the short passing game to keep the ball moving down the field. On defense, they need to get some pressure up the middle to rush Utah into making mistakes. James Hazard was the X Factor in this game when these two teams met in the regular season just under a month ago. Let's see how the sequel goes. Hollywood loves the sequel and so do we. The championship is on. San Jose is going to take this from their own goal line. And that is number 81, Marty Hampton, on the kick return. He will start this out at the San Jose 24. And James, what do you like about the San Jose flight offense? Well, the, you know, the San Jose flight offense has really turned it on the last couple of weeks. They're averaging 40 points per game the last two weeks after only averaging less than 20 for the first eight weeks of the season. And there is Joseph Green, first-year quarterback, and the other guy that you mentioned in the Open, Jimmy Hazard, had over 200 yards when these teams met just under a month ago, and Green's first offering is incomplete to the right side, and that is deflected by cornerback Tony Williams, second and 10. Yeah, Salt Lake's, I mean, San Jose is trying to get them, uh, Salt Lake off balance by starting off with the pass here. And Joseph Green orchestrated a pass-heavy offense in the first half of the season. It wasn't until about midseason when Hazard became the focal point. And the rest, as they say, is history. Hazard, the lone setback here. Short drop for Green. It will be Hazard on the flare route. And Hazard will get a couple to make it third and seven. Let's meet the San Jose flight offense. The quarterback, number 11, is Joseph Green. At halfback, number 25, Jimmy Hazard. At fullback, number 24, Chris Britton. The wide receivers are number 13, Doug Spelling, and number 83, Logan Strange. The tight end, number 88, Anthony, Anthony Delano. And at guard, number 74, Johnny Van Mann. Spread look for the flight here. At third and long, Green will take another drop, three-man rush. He's going to find Hazard as an outlet, and Hazard can't get anywhere, maybe a yard. Take it down with relative speed by Matt Kander, the back of free safety. And that is a quick three and out for the flight. Yeah, Salt Lake City is really prepared for Jimmy Hazard. He's number one in receptions for running backs, and they shut him down and covered those flats really well this series. Aaron Lynn, the putter for the flight, will line up at his own 12-yard line. Another storyline here. San Jose went 3 of 12 in their game against Salt Lake City. It somehow came away with the win of that game, 1 by 5, mostly to the effort of Jimmy Hazard. And for Salt Lake City, Grant Hickman, special teams ace here. A little demonstration after that. And Salt Lake City's going to have nice field position to start this drive at their own 41. Yeah, now's the time that San Jose is going to try to put pressure on Salt Lake City, uh, see if they uh, start off with a pass. Tommy Utah, 6'5", 240, will start this series in the shotgun. Wins to the top of your screen. He'll throw on first down. Over the middle. Big shot. Nobody there looking for Kelsey Brown. Over the middle there. While we have a second, let's meet the Salt Lake City offense. The quarterback is number 12, Tommy Utah. At halfback, number 21, Brooke Beisel. The fullback, number 33, Terrell Sutherland. And wide receiver, number 11, Ace Sharp. And number 15, Kelsey Brown. And the tight end, number 85, Euron Hammer. And Salt Lake City will do it again here. Second and 10. Sharp to the bottom of your screen. Sutherland checks in at fullback. 
Utah will drop back, throw to the left side. That is complete to Brown. Brown able to turn up field, and that is going to be close. We'll call it third and inches. First catch of the game for Kelsey Brown. Yeah, that was good. Uh, good, good short pass. Get get the ball moving. Get Utah settled down in this championship game, and let's see what they do. Brown, perhaps the more acrobatic of the two wide receivers. A sharp, just a big old target. Plays much bigger than his listed 6'1 size. And now third and inches. The handoff to Beisel. Beisel has the first down. And Salt Lake City squarely in plus territory now as we have our first first down of the game. Yeah, that's exactly what Salt Lake, Salt Lake City is going to look, uh, look to do is get those short passes, get some yards, and then give it to Beisel to pick up the short yardage for a first down. And Utah back into the shotgun here. I believe that is sharp at the bottom of the screen. He'll throw on first down. Looking for Brown. Complete over the middle. A gain of six. Second and four. And Kelsey Brown warming up. Yeah, Deshaun Evans was in there to uh, catch to, catch him on the slant. Good coverage. But he's able to get in there and make the catch. Salt Lake City goes to the heavy set. That is Tory Perry, the backup tight end in there as well for Beisel. And Beisel has another first down. Nice mix of running and passing here, James. The Salt Lake City commences through their first drive of the game. Yeah, exactly what Salt Lake City wants to do is just take those chunks and keep moving slowly down the field and eventually take that time of possession. Salt Lake City not quite in field goal range here. Four wide receivers on the field. Beisel gets the call again. Spin cycle out of the backfield. And makes chicken salad out of whatever that run would have been. For a gain of three, second and seven. James, one of the things I love about the San Jose defense is their secondary. They usually play with five or sometimes six defensive backs. But they play the run just as well as the pass. And they'll be put to the task again here. As Salt Lake City goes back to the heavy set on second and seven. Beisel gets the call. And Beisel will get upfield, and you see the defender swarming up there. Mike Jones and Bryant James, among others, on the tackle, third and three. Yeah, exactly like you were saying. You know, that, that time they ran a nickel, but uh, these uh, free safeties and strong safeties were able to get up in there and stop that for a short game. This would be a 47-yard field goal from here. Probably within the range of kicker Sonny J. Utah probably has greater aspirations for this drive out of the offset eye. Third and three. Short drop over the middle. And that is deflected, intended for a sharp. That is Josh Slap on the coverage. And here comes number 14, Sonny J. And it looks like Salt Lake City's going to settle for three. Yeah, good stop by San Jose. Uh, just getting the short yards and. Yeah, that's going to like they're going to go for three. Sonny J was four for four yet last week in their win against the Adams. This will be just inside 47 yards. For Sonny J, 5'11", 215, joined the team in week seven. Spot is down, kick is up. And that is no good. Looked like it had the leg. But Jay could not calibrate the aim. Maybe we'll get a better look at the replay here. And that appears to be wide right, and it looks like it just barely caught the net. And now San Jose will get some nice field position to start this second drive. Yeah, nice break for San Jose. Good field position at the 37. Fullback Britain checks in for San Jose. Hazard all the way back. Green will throw it first down, looking for Hazard, and Hazard has a, a catch, a spin. And a gain of four to make it second and six. Some crew from San Jose getting Hazard the ball out in space early in the uh, early in this first two drives of the game. Yeah, that was all Hazard be able to get some uh, yardage on that because Salt Lake City is really staying close up in those flats. Green again, throwing over the middle. That is caught. Getting out of the other wide receivers involved, and Logan Strange has his first catch of the game. Beautiful, Start. in down and in, the, just just past the uh, first down marker, exactly where they wanted to put it. 
Strange, 5'11", 181. Very nimble, very versatile wide receiver. And now Salt Lake City loads the box for first to 10. And Hazard on the flare out again. And Hazard's able to get upfield. And that's another nice gain on first down. A gain of six. Call it second and four. Yeah, I expect uh, San Jose to be doing a lot of this again. You know, Hazard is, leads the league in 56 receptions on the season. That's uh, one of their bread and butter plays. Jimmy Hazard, he can run it, he can catch it. Maybe Julie had some carrots for you. Second and four, Hazard straight up the middle this time. No nuance to that. That's another Salt Lake City, excuse me, that's a San Jose first down. And Salt Lake City defensively on their heels here for San Jose's second drive of the game. Yeah, San Jose's offense was able to pick up the blitz and uh, Saint Salt Lake paid for it by giving up the first down. Two tight ends to the left side for the flight. Green will drop back again. It has no problem hitting Hazard again. And Hazard, a race to the first down marker. But Hazard corralled. Not a bad gain on first down. James again, outstanding production here on first down at second and three. Yeah, initially they were doing a good job, but these uh, linebackers and uh, safeties are not getting out there in the flats to, to stop the play. Twins to the bottom of your screen now. Green will drop back again, throwing the out route this time. And there is Doug Spelling. And they're going to call that incomplete. He had the yardage, but didn't have the feet in bounds. Third and three. Mm. And while we have a second, let's meet the Salt Lake City defense. The defensive end, number 98, Marcus Sledge. And inside linebacker, John Martin. The outside linebackers, Bogey Barr and Zeus Howard. The quarterback, number 22, Gerard Brody at free safety. Number 25, Isaiah King the third. And the strong safety is number 20, Kenny Slider. And number 31, Frankie Custer. That is your Salt Lake City defense. And San Jose will try and keep them on the field just a little bit longer as Hazard cannot quite reach the line on third and three. And I think this will ultimately end up in a punt or a field goal. I don't see them going for it this early in the game, James. Yeah, no, I don't either. Of course, they might try to draw them off sides. However, indeed. <laughs> Perhaps a little trickeration here. For Joseph Green, and it oh. worked! They actually snapped the ball, but it, all for naught, a free play. But they're going to get another one at this. That's number 98, Marcus Sledge, who jumped off sides. And San Jose has a new lease on life for this drive. Wow, just exactly what they were looking for. And that's really going to hurt. If uh, these both these defenses are great against and preventing the score. So this is really going to hurt Salt Lake City. That might be the first time I've seen this work at this level, at the SFLM level, drawing a team off sides. But it looked like they had a play in store, James. It looked like they were ready yeah, to go. They were. First to 10. San Jose now at the opponent's 25. And Hazard, Less modest gain there on first down. Second and nine. You see the numbers there for Hazard. 12 yards on five carries. And of course, we're still getting started, aren't we? That's right. You know, it, they, uh, they're they going to keep feeding him the ball, and he's going to break one here. Most of his gains have been through the air. He's five catches for 21 yards so far. And there's another run for him. Now third and six, Bogey Barr getting it done on that stop. I'm really surprised not to see Spelling get involved in the game here. Maybe they'll do it here. Doug Spelling, just the one target, has not completed a catch yet. By Green, they go back to Hazard. And Hazard is converged upon at the line of scrimmage. That's Kenny Slider, Isaiah King the third, also there. We're not gonna let we're not gonna get fooled that time. And the yeah. play goes for a loss, fourth and five. Yeah, they were waiting for that. They 
they figure they'll they'll beat them some other way, but they're not going to beat them through that flat again. And here comes kicker Simon Wells. This would be a 37-yard attempt. Kick is up. And that is good. We have our first points of the game. Simon that's, Wesley. Exactly, that's exactly what so San Jose was looking to do. You know, um, you know, they really this Salt Lake City defense can give up some yardage, but they usually don't give up many scores. So they got to get all the scores they can. Just under two minutes to play here in the first quarter. San Jose leading Salt Lake City three nothing. It's the SFLM Championship game. So glad you're joining us here on Father's Day evening. And Hickman will get out to the 28, and that's it. And now Tommy Utah and company will march back out on the field to start their second drive of the game after missing the field goal from Sonny J earlier on their first drive. Sutherland in at fullback. Twins to the top of your screen. You're on hammer. On the right side of the formation. Utah will throw on first down. Hands in his face. And throws it out to the middle. And that is intended for Brown, but incomplete. Deshaun Evans on the coverage. Second and 10. Yeah, Deshaun was just waiting out there in the in center field. And he looked like he was just watching the quarterback's eyes and was ready for that the whole time. Two masses of humanity on that play. One around the quarterback and then one around the receiver. Sharp now at the bottom of your screen. Sutherland will stay in. Utah short drop. Throws to Beisel on the flare pass. She's able to turn up field. And she is out of bounds after a gain of four. Third and six. I believe that is Beisel's first reception of the evening. See Number if uh, Salt Lake City tries to go through a short pass here to Brown try to get this first down Utah three of six on the evening so far Sutherland will stay in at third and six short drop look at the left side that is Brown Brown has to make the adjustment and Brown fighting for yardage gets the first down outstanding second effort by Kelsey Brown and Salt Lake City will move the chains yeah that's what he's in there for you know he, he's really the possession receiver that gets those first downs you know, he's got 73 receptions this season, a second, good enough for a second in the league. Torrey Perry checks in the back of tight end. Salt Lake City goes to the heavy set. Biza will catch the flare pass and get absolutely nothing. Converged upon by Jermaine Menafield, among others, second and 10. Yeah, it'll be see. It's interesting to see they're trying to um, get Beisel. They she was doing a good job in the um, the run game. It's interesting that they start throwing throwing the passes to her now. San Jose staying in that nickel look. Utah throws the out route to A Sharp, but Sharp makes that catch. Third and seven. Yeah, that's a really short out route. You know. Uh, San Jose will give that up all day long as long as they don't get beat deep. Now a big third down for the Rustlers. Sutherland will check back in. San Jose staying in the nickel. Five-step drop for Utah. Another out route, and that is caught, and that is Kelsey Brown this time. But Brown well short of the sticks now. And it looks like they're saying she's not out of bounds. They're going to let this clock run out. Yeah, it's a shame. You, know, you really want to make sure you get to those sticks and those third downs before you make your cut. And that is the end of the first quarter. Teams have to switch sides, but you can stay right there. More championship action coming your way. You're watching the SFLM title game on YouTube.
Tommy Utah on the Salt Lake City offense just escorted off the field. And the wrestlers will punt it back to San Jose. Gussie puts it in the air. And that is fielded at about the 20 yard line. And Marty Hampton will get this out to about the 25. And we have an injury on the field. That is Zach Reynolds, a backup cornerback. You hate to lose anybody in a championship game, especially someone as significant as a special teams player like Reynolds. We're not going to get a great look at the injury here. Really difficult to tell from that angle what happened. Yeah, but this is this is definitely so far living up to the hype. You know, number one, number two scoring defenses on the field, and that's what's been this first quarter. San Jose will start this drive from their own 25-yard line. This is their worst field position so far of the game. Green short drop to Hazard. Hazard makes a spin move and beats one defender, and will get four yards. A gaggle of wrestler defenders. In on the stop, second and six. Yeah, they really got to get Hazard involved. He's only had four attempts so far this, the first quarter. So really need to get him involved and moving more. One step drop, toss to Spelling, and that is caught, and that is a first down for San Jose. And Doug Spelling has his first catch of the game. Very sneaky, that one-step drop. It just tosses it right over the offensive line. And Doug Spelling, the sure-handed wide receiver, at 6'6", 222, coming up with a catch. He's going to be a hot commodity come this weekend. San Jose now at their own 35. Hazard up the middle. And Hazard creating space. Gets a gain of eight yards. Second and two. He had to work for every one of those. That's right, and that's and that's exactly what they want to do is they want to keep getting them in there, pounding, and he gets the more yard um, carries he gets, the more he can break away and make those big runs. Nine and a half minutes left in the first half here. Hazard up the middle. Hazard has a first down. Hazard dragged down by Frankie Cooster. If you're new to the SFL, the Simulation Football League combines traditional sports, esports, and a role-playing game into one. Team strategies are being executed in real time by our simulations as real-life players compete on the virtual gridiron. For more information about the SFL, visit our website at simulationfl.net. The SFL, we put the fan in fantasy. San Jose with a fresh set of downs that will throw this time over the hands of the defender to Spelling. And Spelling has a gain of eight. And James, when I watch Spelling run that out route, that is the way that I've seen it run time and again in the big leagues at SFL. And I see him doing that coming up in season 17. Oh, yeah, that's right. But, you know, Isaiah King was looking for some, another interception like he did last week. He got two last week, and he was trying to jump that ball. Just missed it. And he will make his fair share of those plays, to be certain. Hazard up the middle. Hazard with the first down. And Hazard starting to warm up here. You see the numbers there. 3.6 yards per carry. An improvement on his 5 for 12 earlier in the game. And San Jose will move the chains again. A nickel look for Salt Lake City. The fullback will stay in. For San Jose, Hazard again. Hazard met ferociously by John Martin and Frankie Cooster. There's the update on Reynolds. His season is effectively over. Not unlike that smoldering pile of rubble you saw in the background of that last shot. Second and eight. Hazard. Dragging bodies. Going to make it third and short. And Hazard is really earning his money tonight. Dragging bodies. Gerard Brody, among others, trying to get to that first down marker. Yeah, they're just putting the ball in his hands and, you know, are willing to make that. You know, I think this is really 
playing into St. San Jose's uh, hands because they want to make this a defensive struggle. Hazard again, this time on the flare out, and what an outstanding open field tackle by Bogey Barr. Technically a no gain, but a TFL quality tackle from Barr, 6'4", 245. And a fourth to three, it looks like San Jose is going to have to punt. Kick is away, and this has some coffee corner potential. And it does go out of bounds wow. at the one-yard line. Aaron Lynch should be playing in the U.S. Open with ball placement like that. An outstanding punt for San Jose. Just barely caught that ends the end there, right, right in that corner. And this is really dangerous for Salt Lake City. We're definitely in safety territory. So they're going to try to get Beisel the ball and get her out of this mess. Beisel, the lone setback. Yaron Hammer, the tight end, not even in the game here. What will Utah do? The handoff to Beisel, and Beisel met wow. the end zone. And they might spot her forward progress at the one. Yeah, it looks like they did spot her at forward progress. That was really close. That is some of the spots I just fail to understand here at this level, especially. But it is second and 10, and now Salt Lake City, cooler heads prevail. They go to the heavy set, and Beisel gets some blockers in front of her. And she will this time get out to the three-yard line to make it third and eight. Be interesting call for, <clears throat> for Salt Lake City to see if they go ahead and uh, try to do a quick out route to get this first down, or they're going to just try to punt it. Sutherland will stay in the game. Tory Perry will not, but Utah's going to throw here oh. over the middle, and that is knocked down by Josh Slap. Kelsey Brown, the attended receiver, but really she needed a better ball from Utah there, and yeah, here comes was, the punt team. That was really dangerous. You know, you don't want to throw it down the middle this, this close in your uh, territory, but they got lucky there. I mean, three consecutive punts in this matchup. A defensive struggle here. Kick is away. And San Jose. Hampton. Hampton dragging a defender. And Marty Hampton will get close to the 20-yard line. They'll spot it at the 22. The SFL Season 17 draft is less than a week away. League Commissioner Cameron Irvine and an assortment of league broadcasters, owners, and Hall of Famers welcome the next generation of SFL stars as they hear their names called for the very first time in the big leagues. That's the SFL Season 17 draft starting this Saturday. Visit the website at simulationfl.net for times and stream locations. And the flight will start this drive in field goal range. And Joseph Green throwing on first down to Spelling. That is caught. Gain of three, second and seven. You know... Green is, you know, having a pretty decent game. They've been all short passes, but he's 13 of 15 so far. And um, he's just moving the ball slowly but surely and then giving the ball to Hazard. And a lot of those passes have been going to Hazard, nine and all. In fact, Green over the middle this time and Spelling drops a sure-handed one. I believe that was Spelling. We're looking at... Uh, Joseph Green shaking his head dejectedly. I thought that should have been a catch. It looked like it was right there, a little bit low, but definitely catchable. Certainly within the catch radius of the magnificent Doug Spelling. And now third and seven. San Jose would love to get more than just a field goal from this short punt and punt return. And there is Spelling. And that's going to be a nice gain to make it first and goal. That was a beautiful move. Nice cut by Spelling on number uh, 22, Jer Brody. Just beautiful. And he just runs that out route to perfection. 
will be a highly prized asset come this weekend in the Season 17 SFL Draft. Now Green with a chance to reach the promised land. Hazard in the backfield. Green will throw here on first down. Looking for Hazard again. Can Hazard turn up field? No, he cannot. He's out of bounds. And they're going to lose four yards on that. It's going to be second and goal from the 10. Flight going in the wrong direction here, James. Yeah, it was, that was not a good pass by Green. You know, he really has to get that ball out in front of Hazard to have, give him a chance to get close to that end zone. Did you like the play call? Yes, I did. I, relay Paul was good. Just couldn't get it in the right spot. Second and goal now. Salt Lake City will go back to the nickel. Green with a deep drop. Looking for pay dirt. And it's intercepted. Intended for Doug Spelling. And it's Gerard Brody coming up with a big interception to take points off the board for Salt Lake City. He just turned around and just was surprised to see that in his hands. He became the offensive receiver. It was really a uh, poor pass by Green. And Green had some space to make a a different decision in terms of where to put that ball, I feel like. Yeah, if he would throw it in the corner, that would have been a touchdown. Beisel. With more room to work with here than on her last drive. But they were backed up to their own one-yard line. And Brooke Beisel will gain two here, second and eight. Definitely think Tommy Utah needs to really start getting this team on his back and uh, throwing some of these short passes, move the ball down the field. Beisel in the backfield, all by her lonesome. And Utah will throw to Beisel on the flare route. Spin cycle, and she'll get a couple more to make it third and five. A positive gain, but you'd like to see a little bit more for that particular play. Beisel will stay in. Ron Hammer lined up to the left. Kelsey Brown at the bottom of your screen. Looking for Sharp, and Ace Sharp has a first down. Ace Sharp running a nice out route there by his. And that will move the chains for the wrestlers. Yeah, perfect out route, drawn to perfection, just past the first down line, exactly how they drew it up. The SFL broadcast team is looking to add new talent to our ranks of broadcasters. Applications are being accepted now to try out for either play-by-play -play or analyst broadcasting positions. No prior experience is required, just a love for the game and a desire to succeed. As Utah will throw here on first to 10, and that is nearly intercepted by number 33, Mike Jones. For broadcasting applications, can be found on our website at simulationfl.net slash broadcasting, second and 10. Yeah, Jones had his eyes on the end zone before he caught the ball. He was ready to go. He had two teammates run back pick sixes last week. He was looking for his chance this week. And his chance may still come. Second to ten. Utah. Look for Torrey Perry, the backup tight end. And Perry will get a couple. But it's another long third down here for Salt Lake City. Yeah, Salt Lake City's got to figure out this San Jose uh, defense and start getting some some short passes, not not these out sh short uh, flat passes. They converted a, converted a third and five earlier in this drive. Utah over the middle this time, deflected, deflected again, and uh -huh. it just bubbled by everybody. And I think even Kelsey Brown, the intended receiver, got her hands on it before it fell to the ground. But fourth and eight. Josh Slap might have had been the first to touch that. Yes, he was. You got about four different guys, James. I thought they were right. going to run that back for a touchdown. Oh, I know it. I know it. And with that many San Jose players back there, Kelsey still had a chance to get to catch the ball. And you saw Slap with that two and a half inch vertical, but that was getting the job done. He got the hand up there and able to knock that ball down. 
And we are just barely on the smiley side of the two-minute warning here. And Frank Gussie will punt this away. And San Jose will have a chance to add some more points. Kick is away. Hampton will field it at the 28. And he'll get maybe a yard. Two minutes and 10 seconds. With the ball at the 29, James, do you put your pedal to the metal here? I, you know, I think uh, San Jose is going to keep doing what they've been doing, giving the ball to Hazard, uh, hoping he can break one. They're not going to take ch a chance because Salt Lake City had a bunch of interceptions last week as well. So their defense is uh, pretty formidable out there in that backfield. Empty backfield for Green. Green will lob it up there, and that is caught by Spelling through a mass of humidity. Not sure how he managed to even touch that ball, let alone catch it. And that brings us to the two-minute warning. Championship Sunday. And the defensive struggle here for you. San Jose up by three, but looking for more. As we are marching toward the end of the first half. Joseph Green, 16 of 20 on the game. And that brought to you by our statisticians here, Hattori Hanzo and Zach Holdorf. Keep it stats for us tonight, fellas. We appreciate it. And Green throws, and that's another first down by Doug Spelling. And Spelling putting on a clinic here in the championship. Yeah, Spelling's just able to get those slants just into the inside shoulder of the cornerback, and he, he could get hit every time right on target. Spelling, six catches on the evening already. As the flight enter plus territory. Clock continues to run. Hazard up the middle, gets nowhere, lose a yard. And that is number 55, John Martin, who had a great game last week. Getting himself a TFL there, second and 11. Green again, this time throwing to Hazard. And Hazard again, shut down. That's technically a no gain. That is Gerard Brody, who had the interception earlier, making the tackle. And the clock will stop with one minute to go in the first half. You know, they, they should just go ahead and throw those slants to Spelling. They've been working all along for eight to ten yards. So to get this first down. The ball still barely in plus territory. The fullback checks in for San Jose. Third and 11. Short drop by Green. Green running the out route to Strange, and that is deflected. Kenny Slider. Got a that was perfectly played by Slider. Uh, it looked like he was just waiting for that. Interestingly enough, because I think if he would have caught it, it would have been short, but good play by the defense. I agree. And I agree. With fourth and 11, Aaron Lind will march out. And now it'll be Salt Lake City that might have a chance to do some damage before the intermission. The punt is away. No challenge by Salt Lake City at all. And that is caught. And that is Grant Hickman on the return out to the 15. And I don't think we'll see too much from Tommy Utah and friends before the intermission here. On the 15, yeah, but but you know what? You know, if anybody's going to air it out, it's going to be Tommy Utah. The third in the league in passing yards. You know, why not? Salt Lake City. With three wide receivers. You're on hammer to the right of the formation. Bicel in the backfield with Utah. Utah will deal. That is Kelsey Brown. And Kelsey Brown makes the catch and gets out of bounds. Her fifth catch of the evening. That's a gain of seven with 44 seconds left to play. Yeah, it was a good play. Not going to, out of bounds right away, but getting up there and getting some more yardage before she went out of bounds. Utah in the shotgun. Uh, Terrell Sutherland checks in. Utah has time. Over the middle. Wide open. Is he sharp? And Salt Lake City will call timeout. Nice gain over the middle by Ace Sharp, who got himself very much open. 
Yeah, he found a seam in that zone defense and just perfect positioning. Josh slap on the tackle. Sharp did a great job just finding that seam between the second and third levels. And Sharp looks like he's going to sit this play out. Kelsey Brown, the lone wide receiver here. And Salt Lake City gets it to the heavy set with 39 seconds left to play in the half. But Utah will throw to Beisel, and Beisel takes a shot for no gain. And Salt Lake City will hurry it up. <laughs> 25 seconds over the middle, intended for Tory Perry. Nothing doing there. Robert Crone might have been on the coverage of that zone blitz. But now third and nine with 24 seconds remaining. Sutherland will stay in. Beisel the deep back. San Jose in the nickel. Utah short drop looking for Beisel on the screen. And Beisel with room to roam gets a first down. But you can't get out of bounds. Clock continues to run. Salt Lake City will try and get a playoff here. And they do. And that was Brian James, who had the pick six last week, reaching skyward to make that play. Five seconds remaining in the half. That was an interesting series of plays. Um, it looked like they didn't really know what they wanted to do. Initially, they, you know, were... Where it looked like they're going to try to get get some points, and then they went to the heavy set and hurry up, and it just was really discombobulated there. And we'll see a hail mary here with five seconds remaining. Utah under some pressure. We'll let it rip, going down to the sideline, and that is intercepted. Bryant James will get credit for the pick, and you see James just playing deep third. And that will do it for the half. Halftime here at the SFL Minor League Championship. And a defensive struggle here. San Jose barely leading Salt Lake City 3-0. James, your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, just exactly like you said, defensive struggle. You know, San Jose was looking to just keep time of possession, uh, keep the ball away from Tommy Utah in that third-ranked pass offense. They've done a good job so far on that. You know, neither quarterback is getting the ball down the field. Their short passes mostly to their to their running back out of the backfield. And, um, you know, it looks like that both teams are pretty content to stay this way, but... You know, I think uh, probably by the fourth quarter, if this game is still this way, uh, I'll see Salt Lake City start opening it up. Joseph Green averaging 3.4 yards per attempt. Tommy Utah just under that at 3.3. And as you mentioned, James, a lot of nickel and diming. We've seen a lot of the running backs featuring into the passing games for both teams. Brooke Beisel has five catches. Jimmy Hazard, 11 but not really producing a lot of yardage in that sense. We'll see what Salt Lake City does here as they will get the ball to start the second half here in the SFL Minor League Championship championship game. So glad you're with us. And that is Grant Hickman running out to the 27-yard line, and that is where Tommy Utah and company will start this drive. And let's see what uh, Salt Lake City's coaches had to say while they're in the locker room. Um, I think it's really, you know, as I said earlier, they're going to have to start opening it up if they can't get the ball going on the on the ground. Well, they come out in the heavy set here on first and ten. It gives you some intention of what they want to do. And Bison will get a gain of three. And I think that's a fair run on first down, second and seven. For this kind of game, that's a fair run. Yeah, definitely not bad. I mean, a little bit below. I mean, she's actually at this for the season. She's actually averaging 4.2 yards for a carry, so not bad. 
Utah will stay in the heavy set for second and seven. Beisel up the middle. Beisel has a first down. No, excuse me. They're going to spot her short. Wow. Ryan James on the tackle, and that's going to be third and inches. That is another spot I just do not understand. Yeah, it looked like she was all the way over the line. I didn't see her knee touch or anything. That's an interesting call. And they will stay in the heavy set. And go to Beisel again. And Beisel, this time met behind oh. the line of scrimmage. And she's going to be short. That was Philadelphia Collins, the inside linebacker. Coming up to make a big play there. And now decision time for the Rustlers. Uh, it looks like they're punting for this. Not taking a chance. In the 3-0 game, every decision you make is just magnified that much more. Gussie gets it away. And that is fielded by Marty Hampton, who gets nowhere on the return. And Joseph Green and company will start from their own 26 for their first drive of the second half. And I don't see uh, I don't see San Jose changing a thing. You know, keep handing it off to Hazard. He put throwing the ball to Hazard out of the um, out of the backfield and sprinkling a little spelling, and they'll keep moving the ball slowly down the field. Green deep drop on first down. That is caught, and there is spelling. And Doug Spelling has his first catch of the second half. The gain of nine, second and one. Yeah, it seems like the so San Jose is just uh, having spelling, doing, taking in route, getting the inside of the cornerback shoulder, and he's beating them every single time. Salt Lake City loading the box for second and one. Here's Hazard. Hazard has the first down. And Hazard breaks a tackle, and Hazard gets loose. Oh, my goodness. Bogey Barr made what might have been a touchdown saving tackle, uh -oh. and there's a player down. That is Frankie Cooster. And what a blow that would be to the Salt Lake City defense if Cooster were unable to finish the game. Great, great blocking. And, you know, Hazard was able just to run through the uh, toe tackles and was able to get that nice big game. And you hate to speculate on those injuries. But hopefully we'll hear more from Cooster. Very shortly, Joseph Green in the flight offense in plus territory now. Green and shotgun at first to 10 for the Salt Lake City 43. He'll throw on first down, and that is caught. And is that Gary Walters? Yes, it is. 6'1", 192, backup wide receiver. And I believe that is Walters' first catch of the game, second and three. The SFL Minor League Championship, Josh Zirkle, James Walters, Hattori Hanzo, and Zach Holdorf in the stats truck. Cameron Irvine producing. So glad to have you with us. And Jimmy Hazard running to the right side here. He's going to get TFL'd by number 26, Tony Williams, third and six. Yeah, the San Jose has got to be careful. They start sprinkling in little passes. They don't want to get too relied on Hazard. Flighter out of field goal range at this point. Well, what will San Jose do here? Green throwing and looking oh, wow. for number 86. That is Vern Zales. And Zales had to step on his man but couldn't bring it in. Interesting decision by Green to go with the backup there. Fourth and six. Definitely in a crucial time. Usually, usually uh, make sure you go through your starters, but you know, that's that's why these guys are rookies. And Aaron Lynn back at the game will try to duplicate his for the first half where he had Salt Lake City pinned to their one-yard line. Kick is away. Kind of surprised you didn't put any pressure on him at this point. And look at this. Oh, wow. Another stellar punt from Aaron Lind. And Salt Lake City will once again play in the shadow of their own goalpost. That is definitely one place where special teams really 
can make the difference in the game when you're forcing that offense to go the distance of the field to try to score. And the way this uh, game has been going, it's going to be a tough road to hoe for Salt Lake City. Absolutely. Heavy set on first down. And Beisel gets room to run. Right out of the gate. And that is a gain of six. And that's what you need. And I'm surprised we didn't see them go to the heavy set in that first drive when they were at the one. They get it done here. You see the numbers there for Utah. Beisel again. And Beisel has a lane. Beisel almost broke a big one. But it's Josh Slap coming to the rescue for San Jose. And touchdown saving tackle might have been premature for that run, but I felt like that's exactly what it was. Oh, it looked like it. I mean, there was great blocking and just Slap just was able to track, track her down and pull her down from behind. If he hadn't done that, she would have been gone. Two quality runs by Brooke Beisel. And Salt Lake City... After having some success in the heavy set, gets away from it. And Beisel in the backfield by herself now. And they go back to her. And Slap again has Beisel's number. And Beisel will just get a gain of one, second and nine. Yeah, San Jose deploying that tough nickel defense against the run. Looks like they got her number going on the inside. Six ten remaining here in the third quarter. Beisel again on second and nine, trying to make some room and nowhere to go. It's Mike Jones, the strong safety who came up to play the run there and did so very efficiently. Third and 11. Yeah, get a little gre greedy, though. They got to get Kelsey Brown in involved, and this is a tough time to do it, but let's see if they can pull it out. Sutherland back in the game, third and 11. Utah over the middle, and that is caught by A. Sharp! And A. Sharp's going to split the defense and then get out of the plus territory. That outstanding catch and run by A. Sharp. And Salt Lake City suddenly cooking here on offense. Yeah, beautiful slant into the middle of the defense. And it, it, all, it looked tough. It looked like um, Collins had a chance of... Uh, no, yes, Collins had a chance of picking that up, picking that off. Yeah, that was a very tight window that Utah got that ball into. Very impressive. And they sharp that catch equally impressive. If not more so. Utah again. Has time. Has no time. Down he goes. And look who it is. Robert Crone. The sack machine for San Jose. Getting in there. His first sack of the game. Yeah, Robert Crone. The uh, number one defensive tackle, according to Sim Scout's uh, draft board for next weekend. So he's really uh, making his name known out in the field. Second and 15. Crone the sack, epitomizing the defense we're seeing here. And it, once again, Josh Slap and Philadelphia Collins converge on the football. And Beisel has nowhere to go. It's third and 15. Let's see if uh, Salt Lake City tries to go down the middle to Sharp again. Sutherland's going to stay in the game. Yaron Hammer is out of the game. Three wide receivers for the wrestlers. And Utah will throw. Has time. Throws it over the middle. And that's caught by A. Sharp. And there's nobody there to catch him. Touchdown, Salt Lake City. A sharp getting it done. That is exactly what San Jose didn't want to do is get the, the uh, sharp over the defense, behind the defense, right down the middle. Perfect pass. And that was Philadelphia Collins covering A sharp. They'll take that matchup all day long. Definitely. And twice it, on Sunday. And that caps a 99-yard drive, James. Remember, they started at their own one-yard line. And the wrestlers had the first touchdown of the game. That's really how you want to put a statement on the, on the game there. This could be a huge momentum changer. Tommy Utah throwing a strike. 
The ace sharp right down the field. And the kick is up by Sonny J, and it is good. And yeah, Salt Lake City had their first lead of the game. Yeah, that last play looks like they just caught uh, Mike Jones' strong safety out of position, and he was trying to chase um, down. And, of course, like you said, Philadelphia Collins is no match uh, for Sharp on that play. So glad to have all of you here and watching the SFL Minor League Championship game with us here on Father's Day. To all the fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, godfathers out there. Hope it's been a good one so far. We've got a good one here. Salt Lake City with their first lead of the game with 4.04 here in the third quarter. And now Joseph Green, Jimmy Hazard and the flight offense are going to try and answer against what has been a very stingy Salt Lake City defense, James. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, they can't they can't uh, get nervous. They can't get out of their game plan. They have to keep doing what they're doing, keep the time of possession. Um, and keep going forward and getting Spelling in the game and getting Hazard going. And spelling is in the game. It makes a catch for gain of seven, running a short post route. Second and three, and that is the eighth catch. Thanks to our statistician, Zach Holdorf and Hattori Hanzo, passing that along to us. Eight catches on the game for Spelling. Twins to the top of your screen. From the, San, from the San Jose 31. Green will drop back again. Dealing to Hazard. Hazard has to make an adjustment. Cannot turn up field. And will gain maybe a yard. Third and two. That's a tough ball for Hazard to catch and run with. Yeah, definitely. He could have had that first down if he would have had it thrown in front of him. Uh, but, you know, luckily it's only for two, two more yards. Definitely a makeable first down. Time ticking away here in the third quarter. Two tight ends to the right side. And there's Hazard. And Hazard go up the middle. And Hazard with a sidestep. Has a first down. Continues to drag defenders. And is out to the 45. Another inspired run for Jimmy Hazard. Nice tough run right up the middle. And just powering through people in the second level. You can see a spin cycle there. He's working on Isaiah King. And he keeps the feet moving. That's how you break tackles, kids. You keep those feet moving. And Isaiah King's not a small guy. He's 6'4", 205. So he's, Hazard's got some power in those legs. Fullback checks back in for San Jose. Two tight ends to the left side this time. And Hazard will go to the left side. It has a seam. He gets about five yards before John Martin drags him down. And there is the line on Frankie Kuster. Fractured leg. Now 24 weeks. But to quote my colleague Colin Northrup, the SFL medical team will have him ready to go in time for the season 17 draft. Salt Lake City jumps on second and five. Hazard's going to get taken down for loss, but it's all for naught. Another defensive penalty there by Salt Lake City to negate a negative play. And, looks, and I think get that first down. So, you know, Niles, right now is a good time to bring in Spelling. You know, they've been throwing Hazard at Salt Lake City for a while, and they need to get Spelling involved and uh, mix it up a little bit. Hazard. 14 rushing attempts, 11 receptions. Has been the straw stirring the drink tonight. He gets one more carry here. Has the first down. And San Jose marching down the field here. Time ticking away here in the third quarter. The key for San Jose is, you know, Salt Lake City is known for this. Giving up yards, giving up yards. But their def scoring defense is the stingiest in SFLM. So they've got to make it count. And San Jose has not found the end zone yet so far. Over the middle to Hazard. And Hazard will gain four. Second and six. And as they approach the red zone here, James, I would like to see them take a shot or two toward the end zone. Because they really seem to struggle once they've gotten inside the 20. 
That's right, and that's and that's the strength of Saint Luke's Salt Lake's uh, defense. So definitely get Spelling or even get Strange in there. He he's only had three targets and one reception. Three wide receivers in the game. Green, perhaps changing the play at the line. He hands it back off to Hazard, and Hazard will get a few more. Just a couple, and it's John Martin again dragging him down. Third and three this time for the flight. Big, big uh, down right here. San Jose needs this first down to get even into consideration for field goal range. Green will throw. Looking to the left side. That is caught. That is Logan Strange, and Logan Strange comes up with a big catch. That gets Bogey Bar. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Championship drama awaits. Salt Lake City clinging to a four point lead. The final act coming your way soon. You're watching the SFL Minor League Championship game on YouTube. May I have some fours in chat, please? Joseph Green, 23 of 29 on the day, but has not found the end zone. Throws to Hazard here, and Hazard struggling to wow. turn off field, and it finally gets blasted by Tony Williams. Yeah, he had a chance to get a nice gain on that. I mean, five yards isn't bad, but he could have almost got 10 out of that, but he went the wrong way initially, so. When we saw him catch that ball, there was nobody in frame with him. No. And then they finally converged. We're here at Full Moon Coliseum in Los Angeles, California for the SFL Minor League Championship. Joseph Green throws to Strange, and Strange just kicks it. What on earth? Wow. Third and five. They, We've seen yeah. a couple of those. We saw yeah. we saw a drop in the first quarter. It looked very similar to that, but it was spelling. And I wonder if it's just the way the sun is coming in. Yeah, that could be. That sun is right it's behind the quarterback's back, so it could be that. Now, third of five, you can see by the shadows on the field, the players would be looking into the sun here to catch that football. Trips to the bottom of your screen. Looking for Strange, Ooh. and that is nearly picked off. Kenny Slider almost slid away with a pig six there. Right Very fortunate for hand. Green. That was incomplete. Yeah. Oof. Oh. My goodness. Yeah, I think he knows what he needs to work on. And Slider knew season. exactly and oh. He knew exactly what that play was. He oh, recognized yeah. it right away, stepped up, had his hands out, could not quite close the deal. And here comes Simon Wells with what will be a 41-yard field goal attempt. He missed. Excuse me. He converted from 37 earlier in this game. Spot is down. Kick is up. On the way, and it's good from 41 yards. And the flight pull within one. Big series coming up. You know, San Jose's got to stop Salt Lake City. You know, as I mentioned, they started pulling out the, the long ball. This last series, Salt Lake City did. And uh, San Jose's got to make sure it keeps the receivers in front of them this next series. I feel like Salt Lake City, when they've gone to that heavy set and they've opened with that, that has worked well for them on first down. Maybe not second and third when they fall behind. Right. It hasn't done them much good. But it worked wonders for them, especially on this most recent drive where they went 99 yards and found the end zone. And I do wonder if we will see that again here as we see Grant Hickman getting the kick return out to the 27-yard line. I'm going to do a read here because I need to get caught up. Visit the all-new SFL League website at simulationfl.net for info on how to create a player. To join our community, the league and the teams that play in it, links to apparel, helmets, and a comprehensive history of the SFL. Over 1,500 games and thousands of players have hit the virtual field. The SFL. We put the fan in fantasy. And Brooke Peisel putting some flair into that flare pass, but just a gain of one, second and nine. Uh, Josh Schlapp is all over that. You're ready. You know, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, Salt Lake's, I mean, San Jose really starts putting the pressure on these out routes and uh, 
really trying to make uh, take Baisel out of the game. Not seeing a lot of pressure from the DBs here. A lot of cushion for those wide receivers. Utah will throw to Baisel, and Baisel will get a couple more. Third and six. And once again, San Salt Lake City caught in some long third downs. Terrell Sutherland back in the game. Nickel look for San Jose. Utah will throw it over the middle. And it's A Sharp again. A Sharp splits the cover two and has a huge gain down the middle. His sixth catch of the night. Wow. Just really found that seam. Perfect catch. I mean, he, he couldn't not catch that. There was just no one is near there. There's a slap trying to cover him. Once again, they got the matchup they wanted. They got A Sharp on a linebacker. And Tommy Utah will take that all night long. Jack in that yards per attempt number up to 5.8. We've only seen two big passes, and Tommy Utah has both of them in this game. Beisel stopped at the line. And that Sharp, was, Sharp's going over 106 yards now for the game. So he's really putting on a clinic. Absolutely. Our friends in the truck, Zach Holdorf and Hattori Hanzo, have him at 106, six catches on 10 targets. And, of course, the touchdown, the only one in the game so far. Utah, second to 10. He'll throw again. There's the out route. And he's deflected and knocked to the turf. Deshaun Evans nearly had himself a pick six there. He had one last week. Yeah, I think those uh, pick sixes last week got him a little too excited this week. They're... They're trying to go for the end zone before they catch that ball. Third and 10, another long third down for Salt Lake City. Sutherland will stay in. Utah, short drop. Going to the right side this time, and that is caught. Another big catch. And that might be Marty Hampton, or excuse me, that is uh, Grant Hickman. The special teams ace. That was just a beautiful catch right in between the linebacker and the cornerback. Wow. That was a beautiful catch. A gorgeous ball. You see the numbers there for Utah. Tommy Utah over 200 yards for the game. Twins to the bottom of your screen. Utah short drop. Looking to the left side this time. And that is caught. It's Caleb Walker. Another backup wide receiver getting into the mix. And that's a gain of eight, second and two. Yeah, it looked like uh, Walker could have had, if he would have went to the outside, he had Kelsey right. Brown out there who could have uh, blocked for him. He might have had a bigger uh, pickup there, maybe even a touchdown. Salt Lake City knocking on the door. And this is Sutherland, his first carry of the game. And Sutherland's Ooh. in the end zone. Touchdown, Terrell Sutherland. Wow, he wasn't even touched. They were not expecting Sutherland to get that ball. An outstanding blocking by the wrestlers here. And it's Brooke Beisel this time paving the way for Terrell Sutherland. A sharp with a nice block there as well. And now Salt Lake City sitting on what could be a mammoth eight-point lead pending the extra point. From Sonny J. Definitely. At this rate, you know, San Jose needs to turn it on and find that offense that they've had for the last uh, two weeks and get some touchdowns going here. Terrell Sutherland, one rush, one touchdown for six yards. And that was a 73 yard drive after a 99 yard drive in their previous series Salt yeah, Lake City converting some long third downs James to get that done yeah and that's exactly what fullback too you know you want the fullback in there to get near the end the um close to the end zone and be able to punch it in and Sutherland just teed it up and took it all the way in Hampton gets the kick out to the 26. 
And now San Jose and Jimmy Hazard. And Jimmy Hazard, who, believe it or not, is over 100 yards all purpose. By our count, 84 on the ground and 28 through the air, but has not found the end zone tonight. They'll start from the 26. Joseph Green will throw on first down. Finds Hazard on the flare. And Hazard will get a few. And get blasted by number 91. And that's a gain of three, second and seven. Yeah, San Jose really needs to start thinking about turning it up a little bit and getting this ball down the field a little bit more because you know it's not gonna it's not gonna go the way they've been playing in this game. If they're gonna continue to play that way, it's not gonna cut it. That was Zeus Howard on the tackle with week five signing. And now Hazard up the middle this time, and Hazard gets dragged down from behind. And the pair of defenders, Bogey Barr in there. And number 90, Julius Arnold in the mix as well. Third and five. And the clock continuing to run. While San Jose is on the field, down by eight. Their largest deficit of the game. Green has time. Uncorks one. It's thrown, deflected, deflected again, and falls to the turf. Kenny Slider had a tip on it. Bogey Bar had a chance to come away with it as well. But it's a three and out for San Jose. Not good for San Jose right now. They really needed this drive. Uh, so now it's time to for them to step it up and uh, do what they did in the first half against Salt Lake City. Eric Lind. Went a couple coffin corner punts earlier in this game. Probably out of range to do that here. Punts it away. We have not seen a lot of punt pressure today. And that is caught. And run upfield to the 38. Keep up with the SFL and its teams on social media at Simulation FL. Follow us on Twitter for weekly broadcast schedules to discover team content. And stay up to date on SFL News. Let us know who your favorite team is or how you enjoy the broadcasts each week with the hashtag make an impact. Thanks for your support and viewership. And thank you for joining us here in full moon Coliseum in Los Angeles, California, the SFL title game, Salt Lake city and San Jose and Tommy Utah finding a sharp again for another monster gain. A sharp back in plus territory, his seventh catch of the night. Wow, they are just picking on Josh Ramsey tonight. Again, another beautiful pass. It just looks like they're they're really uh, thrown away from Bryant James, who had those two picks last week and with one return for a touchdown. Absolutely, and Sharp, who have always said plays bigger than his six foot one inch frame, would suggest getting it done here. Utah throwing, and that might have been pass interference as Utah was going for Grant Hickman, and I felt like the defender got a, there a little bit early. Yeah, and that's but that's that's the way he's got to like got to play that because any more any more yards on this, you know, it's, it's going to be really tough for San Jose to come back if they Salt Lake City scores again. The clock is Salt Lake City's friend at this point with 5.39 to play in regulation. Utah dealing to the left side. That has caught Kelsey Brown, who we've not heard from in some time. Catch Makes a catch on the out route and gets out of bounds. Third and three. The clock will stop with 5.34 to play. Good stop by Jermaine Menafield to ensure that uh, he doesn't get the first down. You see the numbers there for Utah, 258 yards on the evening. Third and three, Beisel out of the heavy set. Beisel has a first down. And Beisel will give Josh Slap a free ride for a couple of yards. That, that was a crucial, crucial first down that brings them in field goal range and uh, Really, uh, I think the flight really need to get an interception here and uh, stop from scoring. Five minutes, under five minutes now 
in regulation. Tommy Utah trying to put the icing on this cake. Finds Beisel on the outlet pass. And Beisel has a gain of two, second and eight. Clock continues to run, James. Yes, Slap is doing all he can. He's got 13 tackles already, two assists, and three passes defended. Salt Lake City wisely stays in the heavy set. Tommy Utah in no hurry to get this playoff. Finally does snap it. Hands off to Beisel. Beisel gets hit for a loss. Philadelphia Collins in on the stop, third and ten. And we are closing in on four minutes left to play in regulation. Sector 6 is the official apparel provider of the Simulation Football League. Visit Sector6Apparel.com for completely customized jackets, flags, T-shirts, and more that help each team stand out from their opponents. Get the gear the fans wear with Sector 6 and the SFL. Utah to Beisel. And Beisel again getting very little in terms of yardage, but accomplishing a great deal in terms of taking time off the clock. It's fourth down, and the clock continues to run with about three and a half to play here in regulation. Yeah, this is playing right into Salt Lake City's hands. You know, they'll, they'll go ahead and take those three points and uh, make San Jose try to beat them through the air. This would be a 30-yard, 30 38-yard field goal attempt for Sonny J, who missed from 47 earlier in the game. Spot is down. Kick is up. And that is good from 38. And suddenly we have a two-score game. And this this right here is where, you know, Salt Lake City's, you know, bend but not break defense really comes in to play because, you know, has, like you talked about earlier, Hazard has had a decent game. Spelling's put up some decent yards, but they haven't been getting up the those touchdowns. And um, that's the difference in the game. San Jose needs two scores, and they need at least one of them fairly soon. Marty Hampton gets the ball out to the 26. And now Joseph Green, who's averaging only 3.6 yards per pass attempt, needs to get the ball down the field here. Their longest completion of the day, 11 yards. That delicious stat from Cameron Irvine. And there's a throw. And that is deflected and falls oh. to the ground. And that is Chris Britton, the fullback. Yeah, it looked like there was like five, five rustlers there ready to catch that pass, intercept that. Wow. Very lucky they didn't lose that one. Any number of rustler defenders could have come up with that ball. Very fortunate that it fell incomplete for San Jose. Second and 10. Joseph Green will try it again. Hazard, the lone running back. Four wide receivers for Green. Dime look for Salt Lake City. Green over the middle. That is in the hands and then out of the hands of Walters. Isaiah King the third in on the coverage, third and ten. San Jose, San Jose running San Jose, out of chances here. Yeah, definitely. That's exactly what I was going to say. San Jose is in panic mode right now. You know, they have to pick up this first down and really get the ball moving to have even a chance. Clock stopped with 2.54 to play. Trips to the top of your screen. High snap for Green. Green throwing on the out route. And that is caught, and that is a first down. And that is Marty Hampton, the backup wide receiver, who grinds out a first down for San Jose. 2.49 to play. A little bit of life left in there. And uh, it almost looked like he wasn't going to make that first down. He was lucky that the safety wasn't able to come up and uh, stop him right away. Tremendous yards after the catch from Marty Hampton. Gets a first down and stops the clock. Not too shabby. 
Britton and Hazard in the backfield together. Three wide outs for the flight. Green will throw on first down. Steps up in the pocket. Under pressure. Ooh. Down he goes. And they're going to have to hurry up. Second and 13 now. They'll obviously stay in the same formation over the middle. That's nearly intercepted by John Martin. Martin gets his hands on a third and 13. Yeah, that hurry up. He's, he definitely... Uh was a little bit frazzled there to throw that ball right, almost right into the hands of Martin. Panic beginning to set in for San Jose. Meanwhile, at Salt Lake City, they're pulling out the bubbly. 2.32 to play here. San Jose down by two scores. Green will throw it over the middle. That is caught. They're well short of the line to gain. Britton, the receiver. It's fourth and four, and the clock continues to run, and we're not seeing a hurry-up from San Jose or a timeout. And they, they're going to have to go for this. So here they go. They finally got to the line. We're going to have to hurry to get this off before the two-minute warning. Oh, it's Salt Lake City jumps. Britain again. And Britain, an interesting choice here. But does get the first down. We'll see if they keep the penalty or just decline it. They will decline the penalty. The first down will stand from Britain. 2.04 to play in this one. The SFLM Season 3 Championship. San Jose at Salt Lake City. The three and four seeds. Salt Lake City knocking off previously undefeated Albuquerque on their way to the title game. Just one more dragon left to slay. Green throws the left side. Hazard. Hazard can't get upfield. And that will get us to the two-minute warning. Almost there for Salt Lake City. Yeah, and oh. this, with the amount of time left in the game, this is not going to do it. They didn't really need to get it aired out to Spelling or to uh, Strange and get some yardage on his next play. Second and six, green under center, long drop. Throws on the run, and that is caught by Spelling. What a catch. That's going to get them close to the red zone. That's what they got and they need to keep doing that. The short passes, these 3.9 per attempt average is not going to cut it. You know, 10, 15 yard chunks is where, where he needs to go with these. To the 23, I believe that catch from Spelling. Gain of 14 would be the longest offensive catch of the game for San Jose. They need at least two more of those. Britain in the backfield with Hazard. 155 to play. San Jose has all of their timeouts. Green, short drop. Looking to the corner, and that is caught. Spelling catches again. That's out of bounds again. And they are just at the 10 yard line. First and 10. Perfect spot, nice out route, right over the defensive player's head. That's exactly what they wanted. Chat calling for a view. They might get it here. Let's see. And San Jose going to hurry up and line up. And trips this time. Britain will come off the field. Green with a deep drop this time. Throw to the right side now. And that is spelling again. They're saying he's the, he caught it and he got out of bounds. They'll stop the clock. 147 to play. Second and five. Looks like they're putting spelling all over the field. First left side, then right. San Jose has all three of their timeouts. But they need two scores. Trailing by nine. Trailing by 11, excuse me. Green, short drop, going to the end zone. Incomplete, Ooh. but a penalty flag down. The flag thrown in the end zone. Looks like pass interference. That would be first and goal on the one for San Jose. Pass interference. And it is pass Ooh. interference. They're going to call it a bogey bar. 
And with the flag of the end zone, that'll be first and goal for San Jose at the one. That's that's interesting because Martin was right in there too. So, but Bogey, Barr was the one called. Bogey Barr not thrilled with that penalty. I can't say I am either. At the one, this puts Jimmy Hazard back in play here. Eight in the box for Salt Lake City. Going to throw it. Hazard's got it. Hazard's in. Touchdown. San Jose still alive. Now they're going to have to go for two here. See what kind of uh, play they have for their two-point conversion. This will be an interesting call. I'd be inclined to go spelling out route. Spelling out route. Logan Strange. And they've been throwing a little bit to Britain underneath. I wonder if they try that again here. They hand it to Hazard. Bread and butter. And Hazard stopped short. He's not going to get in. Mm. And the deficit remains five. Which, ironically enough, is a deficit that San Jose beat Salt Lake by in their regular season meeting. And now here comes the onside kick. Pins and needles here, folks. It's up. Catch. Get down with it. Caleb Walker tried to actually return the kick. And that is all but the final nail in the coffin for San Jose. San Jose burned a lot of clock on that 13-play drive, culminating with a Jimmy Hazard touchdown reception. And now Salt Lake City is going to run out the clock and San Jose's timeouts. And there's the first one. So glad to have you with us, Josh Circle, James Walters, Zach Holdorf, and Hattori Hanzo in the truck, Cameron Irvine producing. The SFL Minor League Season 3 Championship game between Salt Lake City and San Jose. And it's been an outstanding matchup here. Salt Lake City leading by five, trying to close it out. Second and ten, Beisel gets the call again. And Beisel spits on goal. And Beisel has a first okay. down. Beisel's going to get loose to the 20, the 10. And finally dragged down inside the nine by Mike Jones. And San Jose will use that second timeout, but it's all for naught now. A great block by Sutherland there to seal off to Sean Evans and Beisel. Wow. One horse great. away from being off to the races. Great time for that breakout. I mean, perfect. They had, you know, they were they were gonna run the clock out anyway, but now there's there's just uh San Jose has no shot. And Salt Lake City in victory formation. Minute 25 left. San Jose has one timeout left. And there it goes. And all I could say is what an outstanding game that we've seen here tonight, James. Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely it was a defensive battle. You know, both teams really, especially after the first half, um, we knew that if the things were going to change, Salt Lake City had to start throwing it, and they did. They threw it over the top. Tommy Utah, 24 for 35. Had the touchdown to A Sharp. Did throw an interception in the game. And I think A Sharp, the star of the show. Seven catches, well over 150 yards. Two big catches. One of them went for six. And Salt Lake City found a way to get it done as we we're at one minute to play here in regulation. On the other side of the ball, I am still very impressed with the San Jose defense, this team in general, but especially Jimmy Hazard, and especially all the talent in this defensive backfield. We're going to see a lot of these guys get their names called later next weekend in the season 17 SFL draft. You bet. And that's, that's what it's all about, right? Getting out here and playing these games, 
show off your talents and uh, prepare yourself for the pros. It's fourth and goal. The play clock's ahead of the is behind the game clock by four seconds, so they're going to have to kick the field goal. I guess you don't have to kick it. And it's up and good from 31. Sonny J. Gets three more points. You can add that to his draft stock. Well, that makes it an eight-point game. So if San Jose were able to run back the kickoff for a touchdown and they get the two-point, they could send this to overtime. Definitely, definitely. You know, last season, SFL, Wiley Contero did it against uh, Arizona in the playoffs. So definitely it's possible. Kick is away. It all comes down to Marty Hampton now. And Hampton, spin almost looked like he could have gotten loose. But is dragged down, and that does it. So Lake City is your SFLM Season 3 champions. Your final score, Salt Lake City 20, San Jose 12. James, your thoughts on the game? Well, Salt Lake City, you know, Tommy Utah really did it. You know, one of my keys of the game is to put the team on his back and get the ball downfield, and he got it to A Sharp, not who I thought was Kelsey Brown, but, you know, got some big yardage, 45-yard touchdown to A Sharp, and uh, 171 yards for A Sharp. And Brooke Biosel, you know, she she uh, had 21 attempts uh, for 80, 88 yards, so she really got in there and did her thing. And uh, it's just the scoring defense for Salt Lake City was just too much for San Jose today. Yeah, I think Salt Lake City got it done on defense as well. You remember in the first half, Gerard Brody had the interception in the end zone that took points off the board for San Jose. They had the second drive that stalled out, and they had to settle for a field goal. And it wasn't until the end where Doug Spelling made those three big catches for San Jose, and then Jimmy Hazard had the touchdown reception at the end that made it close. And then Brooke Beisel for Salt Lake City was able to run for a big first down and basically put a nail in that game. But I was just very impressed with how both offenses managed to maintain their composure. They were gaining a lot of yardage. They didn't make a lot of big adjustments, but Salt Lake City going to the heavy set to start the second half and then uncorking some big shots to A Sharp, I think is what we ultimately wanted to see, James. And A Sharp is probably going to get my player of the game. And as for the official player of the game, it is a sharp seven catches, 174 yards and a touchdown, and a season three minor league championship for the wide receiver. That is going to do it for us. For Hattori Hanzo and Zach Holdorf in the stats truck, for Cameron Irvine producing, for James Walters in the analyst chair, my name is Josh Circle. Thank you so much for joining us for the SFLM championship game. The Season 17 Draft is this weekend. Until then, we will see you on the internet. Good night from Los Angeles. Again, your final score. Salt Lake City 20, San Jose 12. Thank you for joining us. Good night from Los Angeles.